Let's look at a couple of uh, polar coordinates to graph on your TI Inspires. So what you're going to do is you're just going to choose to add a graph, choice two. And the graph that your calculator will default to is, the, is a function plot. So we just want to change that. Click on the menu key, choose to go to graph entry edit, and just really simple, choose polar. And now we're ready to go. So <clears throat> if we look at this three cosine six theta, then it's just three cosine six theta. And down here on the bottom are your steps and your range for your theta. So theta is going to go from zero to two pi. That's what two pi is right there. And it tells you the steps that it looks at each time it calculates a new point. So the default is pretty good. If you want to be more exact, you could change your step right here down on the bottom. Just change your step to something smaller, uh, like say 0 0.05 or, or whatever. If you're interested in looking at more, then you can change your theta to go up to 3 pi or 4 pi or pi over 2 or whatever you want. But uh, this, is, this is a good default setting and, and you shouldn't have to move it honestly, uh, except for special or rare cases. So there's your graph and uh, that's, that's all you got to do uh, to get a good look. It's a rose curve. And one thing that you'll just want to make sure that you do when you're examining your rows curves is make sure that you've got a square window. Again, the Inspire automatically defaults to that. So this is a pretty good curve to look at. Uh, however, if you want to change the window a little bit, make it a different size window, that's no problem. Just go into Window Settings. And let's say that we want to go, uh, we know on this row of cur rows curve we're going to go three units away from the pole. So maybe we would want to go from, say, negative 5 to 5 on the x-axis. Well, this is going to give us an, a more kind of an awkward shape looking rose curve and it doesn't quite look normal. So once you're here what you can do is is again just come in and go with a zoom and then square. So we would want to come down here to zoom square and that gives us a bigger rose curve to look at. So that's just kind of one of the ways to do it. Uh, it's not too not too hard at all, and, and, um, and you know once you start messing around a little bit on your calculator, it gets easier. One of the other ones is the cardioid. So again, we can do that. And to do the cardioid, just go back up to that uh, top equation, and you're going to just going to have three minus five, and then sine theta. and then hit enter and there's your cardioid now we don't see the whole cardioid here and the furthest we get from the from the pole from that from that x-axis is eight negative eight so what we want to do is come up here to your window and choose to the window settings and change our y min to like say negative ten but what this is going to do is throw off our window so it's it's not quite right. So again, just come in here and hit zoom square and see if we can't get a window that works for us off the bat. It's a little bit better. We can move up. So maybe we let's change our x coordinates just a little bit. And let's say let's go from like negative uh, 7 to 7. See if that can't get us... Um, a better window and like I'll tell you what let's make our X scale a 1 and let's make our Y scale a 1 It'd be a little bit easier to see things a oh, Y max Y max needs to be 3 and then our Y scale needs to be 1 all right there we go okay so now graph this guy and again, we can see uh, quite a bit of the graph, but not quite the whole graph. Well, on the Inspires, you can move around a little bit to see. And so we can move it. We've got the whole entire graph right there. We can also hit Zoom Square to make sure that we're looking at the right type of window. And there it is. There's a squared window. So again, just fiddling around a little bit with your X and Y max and mins to get the entire curve. You want to see what the true shape looks like.